Makers, I'm Joe the 3D Maker Noob and after one of the most thorough testing periods I have ever made on a 3D printer, it's time for me to give you my official review of the original Prusa i3 Mark III. Now this is going to take a while so make yourself comfortable, you might want to grab beer or some popcorn for this. So the build volume on the Mark III is 250 by 210 by 210. It can be purchased as a kit for 769 euros or fully assembled for 999 euros. The frame is made of 2020 extruded aluminum for the base including the y-axis and 6.25 millimeter thick sheet metal for the rest of the frame. It comes with sensorless homing on the y and x-axis meaning it has no end stop switches due to it having an extremely smart IZ Rambo board meaning the board instantly detects voltage shifts or drops in the stepper motors when they hit something. This also means that if the motors crash into a curled part of the print the printer will immediately stop home and resume the print. The IZ Rambo board also comes with integrated trinamic drivers and 256 microstepping, making the Mark III ridiculously quiet when in stealth mode. For this reason I've decided to do this review while I have a print running right next to me in stealth mode just to give you guys an idea of how quiet this printer is. It also comes with a power panic feature meaning that if you accidentally pull the plug or the electricity goes off the Mark III stores enough energy inside to lift the hot end a few millimeters above the print and save its position. This will allow you to resume a print when the electricity is back by having the printer home on the X and Y axes and then resume the print once temperatures are reached. It comes with fully automated bed leveling thanks to its Pinda probe which now also has an integrated thermistor within. The advantage of having a thermistor in the Pinda means that you don't have to readjust the Z offset if you decide to print with high temperature materials. As in the past the Pinda would trigger at higher distance due to the heat emitted from the heatbed. It comes with a Mark 52 heatbed complete with 25 magnets to keep in place a removable double-sided spring steel build plate. The build plate I was supplied has a PEI sheet on either side. Initially it was supposed to be a powder coated PEI sheet however Prusa ran into some supply issues with that so they swapped it out with this instead offering a discounted rate for powder coated PEI sheets to those who wish to purchase them in the future. It also comes with a direct drive extruder along with Bontech gears to make sure that you have maximum grip on the filament and including the extruder assembly is also a filament laser sensor a laser which can detect when filament runs out and also if the flow of the filament is not constant, for example a during a jam. The Mark III now also comes with a Noctua fan for the hot end in order to keep those decibels down while printing. Not only that, Fans have also have a third wire coming out of them which give the IZ board the ability to read RPMs from the fans and stop the print should any of the fans not be spinning as they should. This comes in very handy if for some reason your fans jam due to a rogue piece of filament or debris jamming into them preventing the print from failure or fans from burning out. As usual it also comes with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and an original E3D V6 hot end. As mentioned the printer can run on normal mode or in stealth mode. Some features like crash detection can only be enabled in normal mode. If you do try to test the crash detection feature while in stealth mode, Josef Prusa might have a panic attack. So stealth mode will give you the quietest printer on the planet while normal mode is still extremely quiet compared to any other printer. There is also an accessory port within the INZ board in order to attach a Raspberry Pi Zero for uh, Wi-Fi connectivity. And last but not least the uh, Prusa Mark III runs on a 24 volt power supply. Any more features and I'm gonna have to start splitting reviews into two parts. So now that the specs are out of the way and I hope I didn't miss anything, it's time to talk about my experience with it so far. Nine weeks ago I received my pre-ordered Prusa Mark III. After unboxing it I put it together during a live stream. The total build time took me about two and a half hours and within three hours I was printing my first test print. The build went relatively easy, the instructions on Prusa's site are always spot on as usual, except a couple of times I acted like a man and not read some of the parts of the instructions which resulted in Josef Prusa almost getting an aneurysm. Seeing as I had just started my own business in 3D printing for customers this machine was essential to me along with three other Mark II S's which I had received in the same week and five more Mark III's which I have yet to receive. Therefore there was no time to do many test prints. I had to get going with prints from customers and it was Christmas period and I had orders to fulfill. However this gave me the opportunity to thoroughly test out the print quality and the reliability of the Mark III and I promised myself that I would start the review process of the machine 
only when or after it had done at least 1000 hours of printing. Now I want to point out that this was essentially a new machine on the market. While it looks like the Mark II S, it's very different in many ways. And with every new machine, teething problems are always to be expected and they were present with many customers who purchased the Mark III. Those problems mainly revolved around firmware issues and very little about hardware but thankfully most of those issues have now been resolved and anything that had to do with hardware was changed so Prusa can now get back to improving the machine even further rather than trying to play catch up. In my case none of the issues that many people complained about uh, were present in the machine that I assembled. Now it could be because I have quite a bit of experience now assembling 3D printers or the fact that it was pure luck, I don't know, but I haven't had any issues so far with this printer. Now in front of me are quite a few prints which I did for the review along with a few that I have done for customer orders. Now I just want to point out that out of those 1000 hours of prints, of customer prints, 800 of those hours were uh, done printing PLA prints involving self-watering pots, hand alphabet that you can see in front of you and about 200 hours worth of ABS prints which involved mainly um, brackets which were custom made. I also want to point out that all of these prints were sliced with Prusa Edition Slicer or Slick 3R using only available standard profiles except for the flexible uh, print which needs some speeds adjustment but I'll get to that in a bit. So first up is the make test. Um, this was printed in a Printer Pro yellow PLA. Dimensional accuracy on every single print is off by less than 100 microns in each axis which makes the machine extremely precise. Tolerance Tolerances are impeccable with all pins from the make test tolerance test falling off as soon as just took them off the build plate. This prompted me to also print Maker's Muse tolerance gauge and with a little bit of effort I've even managed to uh, clear free the 0.15 millimeter clearance spot um, and now it turns freely. Bridging and overhangs performed extremely well. The bridging suffered a bit at around 60 degrees, but keep in mind I always print the bridging test with an orientation facing away from the fan. This way I can get pretty much the best worst possible result when I print something. Details in the rest of the test are pretty much perfect. Very little stringing in the retraction test. This is mainly due to the slicer preset temperatures at 210 degrees. Those strings would disappear at 200 degrees for sure. Z resonance and surface finish are pretty much impeccable as well at this stage giving the Mark III full marks on each test. Now seeing as I try not to print 3D branches anymore I switched on to the paddle boat. Now printing the new paddle boat in a printer pro acid green could have come out a bit better but once again the set temperatures on the Prusa are slightly higher than I would normally use. Main reason for this is the speed at which it prints at. After that I wanted to to print something in CPE. These are a couple of prints I have done in filamentum CPE red which is a cold polyester. It looks ridiculously gorgeous. First is a heart-shaped self-watering pot which I am designing. I am still working on it but it's saying I, I seem unable to finish due to time constraints but I'm sure I'll get to it eventually. And then there is also the top half of the spanner hands spool holder enclosure. Both these prints turned out exceptionally great. Prusa slicer also comes with a preset for uh, CPE profiles so printing them was extremely easy and the results turned out really good. Next I wanted to print something in flexible so I chose some Fiberology, Fiberlogy, Fiberflex 40D which is a great flexible filament to print with. It doesn't require high temperatures to print with and the result is always great. The only few things I tweaked were the speed of the print um, as I turned it down to 30 millimeters a second. This was also used for the rest of the printing parameters and the idea is to keep the speed always constant within the print whether it's outer perimeter, inner perimeter, infill and so on giving you a much better chance of success with flexibles. The result is this gorgeous vase right here which I dubbed Rage Vase. The structure is quite strong, uh, it wasn't printed in vase mode but it is extremely flexible. Now when I start to rage while reading comments from some troll on the channel I can just simply Finally I wanted something a bit more spectacular if you will. Something with incredible detail, 
maximum overhangs that would take long to print. In comes Howl Moving Castle, which is a model designed by Magnet. First off, if you haven't seen Howl's Moving Castle, I highly recommend you do. It's an incredible movie and one which you have to watch at least once in your lifetime. As for the print, I cannot begin to explain the ridiculous amount of detail and intricacies that this model has. The main body prints in two parts, meaning that it doesn't require support uh, in order to print it, but it does need good cooling as it does have little overhangs of about 85 degrees. You then have several other pieces to print which can stick on with some glue. I chose super glue and it worked very well. The model was printed in Prusa Silver PLA uh, once again with preset Prusa 0.15 millimeter slicer settings and also preset Prusa PLA settings. The result is by far one of the most beautiful beautiful prints I have ever printed. Granted I am biased because I love the movie but you can deny that this model is enough absolute work of art and it came out absolutely great. So I highly recommend you try it out and also make sure that you give thumbs up to Magnet over on Twitter. So now that I've tried to condense all that information in as little time as possible not to bore everyone, it's time for me to tell you what I think of this machine. In short, what I don't like about this printer, the rubber feet. What I like, absolutely everything else. The truth is that I personally, me, myself, my opinion, could not be happier with this machine. It has everything I would want as a maker, as a tinkerer, and as a business owner. The quietness of the machine, especially when running in stealth mode, as it is right now, is absolutely ridiculous. I've had this machine running a print in a room full of students recently while I was giving a speech on 3D printing, and no one could tell it was running. And that is also the case while printing at home. I find myself checking up on the machine quite frequently during a print, as I'm not quite sure whether it's still running or not. The print quality, the mechanics, the components, the reliability, and the ease of use simply just make this my go-to machine every single time. The rubber feet are a bit of a nuisance as I have a tendency to drag the machine, even just move it a little bit. Um, this will result pretty much always in the feet instantly coming out of place. And this was also the case during my live build where I had uh, many instances where the feet just popped out. However, this is just me being picky and also having something bad to say about the printer. It, it can't all be good now, can it? So now the question many of you will ask in the comments, Mark III or Mark IIS? And that's a question I can't answer. However, I can tell you this. If you don't care about the flexible build plate, the quietness, the filament sensors, power off resume function, crash detection function, and other features that Prusa already has or might enable in the future. Go for the Mark II S. The print quality is near identical at this point. The Mark II S has come a very long way since conception. Firmware upgrades have turned it into a really solid printer and it being cheaper now makes for a solid investment, which is why I actually bought three more of them. I bought them because I knew the print quality won't let me down or the printer won't let me down. The Mark III is probably the most feature packed machine on the market today and it's difficult to think anything else could possibly be added to it. The reason I opted for the Mark III in my farm is the fact that it's ridiculously quiet and comes with features I require for a business. For example, during Christmas period, I've had several power outages and I did not have a single failed print as they all continued once the power came back on. Also, I need to point out that I had one single failure in over 1,200 hours of printing. And that failure came after about 1,200 hours of printing due to me not cleaning the PI sheet with IPA, having the print just come off and then just printing a nice plate of green spaghetti. But maybe that's a feature that Prusa should add in his next printer, and that is a self-cleaning IPA bed. The truth is that in nine weeks, the Mark III and the other Mark II S's that I have covered nearly 4,000 hours of printing between them and over 10 kilometers of filament. And that is the reason why I chose Prusa's as my main go-to printers for the printing farm. At the moment, at least at the time of doing this review, dollar for dollar or euro to euro in my case, the Mark III is probably one of the most cost-effective printers on the market, giving you exceptional quality 
and reliability for the right price. To top it off, it's completely open source and abides by GPL. The last advantage is that if anything goes horribly wrong with any of my Mark III's or Mark IIs, parts are easy to find. Other parts are printed. The, the rest is either cheap or freely available. And that makes it a very good choice to start a business with. Let alone if you're a maker who doesn't want to tinker around with a printer. You just want something that works right off the bat. This would be your go-to printer. So that is it for me, guys. Sorry if this took a bit long, but there is a lot to cover with this printer. And there is no way to consolidate it even further without leaving anything out. Disclaimer as always, this machine was sent to me by Pusha Research in exchange for 769 euros and an additional 70 euros in shipping fees. All thoughts expressed in this review are my own based on the machine right here. If you want more information on this machine, you can find affiliate links in the video description below, along with links to almost everything that I printed for this review. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, and as always, Happy making, guys.